the Orion Nebula is one of the brightest nebulae in the night sky. And in a brand new JWST image, we can see a whole host of amazing objects, including huge fingers of dust, brown dwarfs, stars being born, and even pairs of free-floating massive planets. Also known as M42, the Orion Nebula is big enough and close enough to Earth that it can be just about seen with the naked eye as a faint smudge in the Orion constellation. It's located 1,300 light years from Earth, just below the famous belt of Orion, right by his, um, sword. We've got two new images of the nebula from JWST, each covering the same area, but in slightly different wavelengths of light. The core of the Orion Nebula contains the trapezium cluster of stars. The most massive of these stars brightly illuminate the surrounding dust and gas with the intense radiation they give off, bathing the landscape in intense ultraviolet light. We can't directly see this UV light in the JWST images, but we can still see everything glowing brightly in different ranges of infrared light. Here is an awesome close-up of a young star surrounded by a protoplanetary disk. This is around one of the stars in the trapezium cluster and has been given the catchy classification of D072-135. The disk itself is made of dust, rocks, and gas and is more than 200 astronomical units in diameter. That's 200 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun and three times the Earth-Neptune distance. Planets could one day form out of this disk and orbit the central star, but it'll take hundreds of thousands to millions of years for this to happen. Speaking of planets though, within the wide images, there are a surprising number of planets in there too. Well, surprising to me anyway, maybe not to you. There are about 540 planets spotted in this image, including 40 pairs of massive planets, known as jumbos, Jupiter mass binary objects. You can see some of those pairs in this really nice graphic. They're the smaller objects in the image, no diffraction spikes as they aren't bright enough like the stars are, and lots of them seem to be in pairs and freely floating in space. That is, they aren't orbiting any stars at all, they're just pairs of planets floating through the stunning Orion landscape. I'm calling them planets, but at this stage I should really be calling them planetary mass objects, or PMOs. They have masses ranging from many times that of Jupiter, down to just 60% of Jupiter's mass. So this is the range we expect for planets, but we would need to do more detailed observations to confirm exactly what they are. Based on their size, brightness, mass, and so on, they are consistent with planets. But we have no details yet about what those planets might really be like. I will leave a link to the paper discussing all of these observations in the description box of this video, so check it out if you fancy. Honestly, all of this is fascinating. Us astronomers don't really know how to explain it. We have lots of models for how planets form around stars, and even lots of models for ejecting single planets from those stars. Supernova explosions or unusual interactions with other massive objects can fling planets out into space, but flinging two planets off in a pair like this is something that we don't have a good model for yet. The leading ideas at the moment suggest that these planets did form around a star and then got ejected as a gravitationally bound pair somehow, but we don't know how yet. It's really hard to form a Jupiter mass planet on its own without a star, which is why we currently favor the ejection idea. The implications from this might be that there are actually pairs of freely floating planets all over the universe, in all of the star forming regions. This is the closest large star forming region to Earth, so we might just be seeing these jumbos for the first time, and really, they could be everywhere. Other than the planets, the coolest thing here is how epic these wide shots of the nebula are. We previously saw part of the Orion bar from JWST, which I made a video about if you want to explore that image more, but now we have these wider shots in two slightly different wavelengths. The greener image is longer wavelengths of near-infrared light, and the pinker image is shorter wavelengths of near-infrared light. They were both taken with the same JWST instrument, the near-infrared camera NERCAM, but the images are made from different parts of the spectrum of light that NERCAM is sensitive to. The longer wavelength image is best for seeing the dust, gas, and molecules in the Orion Nebula. The cavity here is mostly filled with ionized gas, which is seen in purple, and the surrounding regions of reds, browns, and greens are where dust is mixing with molecular, or unionized gas. Any bright objects with the six big spikes are stars shining bright enough to saturate the detectors and the bright bay to the upper left is shown being eroded away by energetic radiation from the bright stars in the center of the region. 
Stars are generally fainter at longer wavelengths, and I think that's clear as we go to the shorter wavelength image, and the stars start to pop out even more. Here, the thousands of stars shine brightly. The stellar masses on show range from 40 times the mass of the sun, down to just 0.1 times the sun's mass. And the surrounding landscape is a beautiful, wispy combination of blues, greens, greys and reds. This is gas and dust that is feeding the star formation and gives the whole thing a very ethereal feel. Another region worth noting is the so-called explosion fingers here, in the BNKL region of Orion. This is gas lanes racing away from an explosion that occurred between 500 and 1000 years ago. We think this could have been a collision between two young, massive stars, but don't have good imaging from back then to confirm this hypothesis. The red colour that dominates the fingers indicates that molecular hydrogen has been energised by the explosion and is emitting brightly in these wavelengths. Near the fingertips, the emission turns green in some places due to hot iron gas, and it even dips towards white where the gas is hottest. The full images of Orion here are absolutely massive mosaics, made up of many, many JWST exposures. In fact, this one is a whopping 21,000 by 14,351 pixels. They're available to download in full resolution, or ESA has uploaded them to ESA Sky, a cool web app that lets you zoom in and around these images really nicely without having to download them. I recommend checking it out and then getting lost in it by moving around and also seeing what else you can find out there. Before we part, I'll leave you with this JWST of a galaxy called NGC 6822. It's another near-infrared image from NERCAM, and the instrument excels at picking out individual stars in incredible detail. The colours, the wispy gas that's also visible, and the vastness of it all leaves me in awe of this image, and I'll leave another link in the description if you want to read more about this one. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on this galaxy and the Orion Nebula and its surprising planet population. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!